Hi, welcome back to the sewing videos. The next step is to piece the bias strips together so that you can make one long continuous strip. Piece the diagonal strip ends together so that they are at 90 degrees to each other. Pin them and then stitch along the diagonal edge, remembering to do the reverse at the beginning and at the end of each seam. Trim the ends of the threads off and also the diagonal corners of each of these strip ends. Press each seam open. You will need roughly three and a half meters of this binding or you can use bias binding instead. If you unfold the edges you'll see it looks pretty much like a bias strip. Now starting at one of the top edges of the shorts, get your bias strip and pin it edge to edge with the edge of the shorts and um, put a pin every 10 centimeters or so until you get to one of the curved edges and then you need to very gently ease the bias strip around so that it follows the curve and um, make sure you don't pull the bias strip too tight. Also start putting your pins a little bit closer together so do them every five centimeters or so. You might come across one of the joins and don't worry about that, just try to um, ease it round gently and keep going. When you get to the straighter edges it will go faster. You can do um, the pins every 10 centimeters or so again until you get to the second curved edge and do the very gentle easing round and put your pins five centimeters together on the curves and about 10 centimeters from the edges. Cut off the excess when you get to the end. Here I wanted to remind you that you can use the base plate of your sewing machine as a ruler guide to line up the edge of your seams. Use 0.8 of a centimeter from the edge. Now using a straight stitch you're going to sew 0.8 of a centimeter from the edge all the way around to attach the bias binding to the edge of your shorts. When you're doing this, remember be like a Grand Prix driver and go fast along the straight if you like, but always go slowly round the curves. That way you can ensure that you get a good equal even edge to the curve as you go round. It's not easy to do, so do be kind to yourself, take it slow, and after each um, pin or so, stop, take a pin out, and progress. Just go at your own pace. It's a tricky one, but it's one of the most important steps. Well done, you got to the end. So trim off the thread and also trim off the excess fabric on the end of the bias binding there. Next step is to check the edges and trim. So it's likely that you may have gone a little bit wide in places. So check the edges and trim off any excess if you find any. The next step would be to press the bias binding outwards. So you need to get your iron going and fold the fabric over and carefully round the corners, just press it outwards. Now flip your fabric over and fold the bias edge towards the inside of the seam. So first fold halfway in to meet the other edges of the fabric and then fold that over again and pin it in place. You do this as you go along all the way round again down the sides and round the curve. Once again, when you do the curves, perhaps go all the way to the other side of the curve, do a pin, and then come back to the middle of the curve. Fold over halfway and then fold the full way and do another pin in between. Then come back to the middle section once more. This is the best way to get a nice even edging. Now you'll need to stitch it along the edge of that folded fabric and just one or two millimeters away from it. Showing you what you're aiming for here. So get your fabric in place and go slowly again. 
remember to take it really slow around the edges again. I mean, sorry, the curved areas again. And once you've done that, then it will um, make sure you do the other side as well. And then take it back to your iron and ironing board and iron it all nicely and flat. Now is the time to put your shorts out flat with the back onto the table and then fold over the sides so that they match in um, terms of the notches at the top. Now I used the type of pen that irons off so I had to go ahead and reposition the dot and the notches um, with my pen and pattern piece again just so that I could make sure that the alignment was correct. This is important so that you fold over the right amount of the shorts in front. Um, once you've um, marked, I also realise you need to mark the pattern piece on the shorts. So mark, mark the bottom dot and then follow up getting the lines parallel and mark the shorts on the top as well. So do that on the fabric and make sure that both the sides of the front are in line with each other. Now match the notches on the top and the dot on the bottom edge where the curve is and once you've got those lined up nicely you need to put pins following along the side edge curve. Once you've got the notches at the top nicely lined up and the dots at the bottom, you will find that the side seam and the front seam are in parallel with each other. It's a good idea then to very carefully try the shorts on and make sure that they're fitting and then make any adjustments as necessary. Perhaps you may need to loosen them or tighten them, in which case adjust the whole parallel structure of the shorts. Once you're happy with the way they're fitting, it will be the time to top stitch the front curve in place. So starting at the top, work your way down, stitching over the previous stitching line where you'd stitch the bias binding on and ending one inch from the bottom edge. And remember to do the reverse stitch on the seam there to make sure it doesn't come undone. Now stitch down the underside flap by a couple of inches because when you're threading the elastic through you don't want to get stuck going down that blind alley. This stitching can be taken off afterwards. Great, you've got to the very last step which is to do the waistband. So press the waist edge over by half a centimeter and stitch this down all the way around. Now fold over the top edge so that you have a channel to put the elastic through. So make sure it's going to be wide enough to fit your elastic. But um, rule of thumb is to use an inch or two and a half centimeters from the edge. Fold it over and press it. This makes it a lot easier, it stays in place a lot better. Pin it in place. And then make sure that you've marked or will remember to leave a gap of about 10 centimeters of stitching so that you can leave a gap to get your elastic in. Now stitch that down around the edges, remembering to leave your gap. Now attach the elastic to a safety pin and thread that through the channel all the way round. 
once the elastic comes through the other side, pull the elastic out a little bit more, fold it over and pin it. Then perhaps you'd like to try the shorts on to make sure the elastic is a good fit. Once you're happy with it, pin the elastic together and do a really nice wide zigzag stitch front and back just to make sure that it's well secured. Then it's time to just seal up off the gap that you left. And that's it. Now you're done. You should have a lovely pair of boudoir shorts now to try on and swan around the house in. Well done. You've done a brilliant job of stitching these. You should feel proud of yourself. There have been a lot of new things to learn in that process. So well done.